And we are people who love thinking grow rich by Napoleon Hill. Yes, we and do. E yes. And each week I cover with my co-host a different principle of success and what the learning is in that. So I've been teaching this for 15 years, some 20,000 hours every single week and run my hybrid program over 60 business quarters. So you can tell I love it, right? And it's the number two bestseller of all time. And it has the exact blueprint to become a millionaire, happy, healthy, and wealthy. And 100 million copies have been sold, yet you have to wonder, why aren't there 100 million millionaires? So why do you think, Trevor? It's the number two bestseller of all time. And it has the exact blueprint. Why do you think people don't follow it and become happy, healthy, and millionaires? Well, you know, we were talking about this a little bit because they don't know what they want. They don't, they don't, they don't have a, a strong idea about where they're going or how do you get, get started. You know, Napoleon talks about this idea yeah. kind of in generalities, right? This, yeah. like, these are all the steps, but one of the things that he, he kind of alludes to right and this is like by working with you kind of figuring out what's that missing piece right it's that purpose piece right yes that, yes that, now that, listen that. the chat is open and i have can you make sure that we are oh here we go let me see if it's live well it says 10 to 10 45 i don't know if it's live oh yeah jackie jackie Halberg just, just oh yeah in. yeah yeah yeah. okay perfect thank you so much for checking that's what hey thank you thank you thank you your sound is frozen welcome to the call yes yeah, so i interrupted you oh hi melody how are you hey oh what a beautiful morning <laughs> oh what a beautiful day i've got a beautiful feeling everything's going my way how about you yeah so far, so good. You know, it's early, but hey, I'm I am I'm in business. All right, so Jackie needs to uh, go to YouTube because I'm streaming this over on YouTube. And, oh, you uh, are okay. Absolutely. Now I don't know how to do that. So awesome. Yeah. Uh, awesome. Hang on, I'll I'll drop a link in uh, somewhere. Uh, <laughs> let me let me do that. Cause... I don't know where in the chat somehow. Yeah, good yeah, morning, yeah, yeah. Zion and Rachel. Where are you calling in from? And Melody, thank you for being persistent. That's what's next week is persistence. And today is decision. And my co-host is Trevor Van Werden. And today is decision. Now, this is mastery. Well, now, this link is in a private chat between you and me. That is. Yep. Yeah, but you can drop it in your... Ver if you're if you're monitoring LinkedIn's uh, live right now, then you yeah. can drop it over in yours. Because I have my, uh, you know my channel open which yep, isn't yep, going to yep, help yep, too yep, much yep, i'm doing it right now so i want to say thank you for rachel for jumping in on my linkedin uh, profile page thank you very much yeah yeah that's, that's really cool nice that's very her. cool all right let me yeah, see yeah. if i can get over there and drop this in the chat yeah all this you know little technical technical stuff but yeah we're live on youtube under the hotness unleasher studios live uh okay perfect. channel boom there you go click on that right. and you're in business awesome let me get back over to where i am okay, okay. <laughs> look kelly's here and zion's here man you know gosh you got this a great these are my here. buds love these are love my it, love, these, it, love it these people have been hanging every week you know, and, and it's yeah. it's no joke to go on a live from Nigeria. I tell you what, Zion. I mean, it's it's some serious bandwidth issues over there, and and you never know if the power is going to be rolling or not. And it's it's a real thing, yeah. So yeah, yeah, we're good. All right, let's get into this, everybody. Now, look, chat is open. Let us know where you're coming from. Ask your questions, any clarifications. This is more teaching, and we'll have a conversation, Trevor. This particular is one of. Trevor's favorite chapters. You spent more time talking about this one than <laughs> the other one. So, right, it's it's fascinating. Now, listen to this. Careful analysis of thousands of men and women who had experienced failure re revealed the lack of decision that it was nearly the head of the list as the 30 major causes of failure. Now, this is in chapter seven, the seventh principle of success, which is decision. And analysis of several hundred people 
who had accumulated fortunes well belong beyond the million dollar mark. Remember, this is in 1937 or the 20 years before that. So a million was fairly impressive, right? Yeah. We'd, be, we'd be okay with that a hundred years it's ago. It's still right? impressive, okay? It's it still is. <laughs> <laughs> All right. It, it doesn't is. just happen, right? It doesn't just like fall out of the sky in your lap. No, we're not all millionaires, right? It just it's a thing. Right? So yeah, we'll celebrate it. Like, you know, I have an effervescent co-host here. <laughs> One thing I, I love about Trevor is that he is ebullient with energy. You push that so, live button and I'm good to go. <laughs> right. So every one of these people, these hundred or so people that accumulated beyond a million dollars had the habit of reaching decisions promptly and of changing them very slowly, if at all. And people who failed to accumulate money without exception had the habit of reaching decisions, if at all, very slowly and changing these decisions quickly and often. So Trevor, let me ask yes. you this. Okay. There are 13 principles of success. What is the seed? What must you have, which shows up in the introduction, mm -hmm. that without that, none of the rest of them work, you won't get what you want. What is the seed of the idea and manifestation in your experience? You got to be, you got to have that purpose. You got to have definite purpose, right? You got to know what you're about. You know, it's funny. I, I met, I met um, Tara LaFont, one of Tara LaFont Gucci's, um, and she's all about purpose. Like, I, man, she is on fire for purpose, right? Mm -hmm. And, and, and I was talking with her, one of her, her associates, Amin, and he was talking about purpose, right? And at that time, so that was like, that would have been six months ago, maybe. And I was kind of like, ah, I don't, I don't know really what you mean. I got various things, but I, you know, after working with you and after kind of really thinking about this from via this lens, I get it. I'm, I'm well, I'm getting it. I'm getting my head around it. Like this idea that we are here to do a thing, right? This is our driving force. This is what mm -hmm. we gotta have, right? Mm -hmm. And it's and it that underlies all of it. So yeah, I'm hundred percent with you, Leslie. And it right. does. And, and, you know, just backing up the way that this is outlined for you each week is built a certain way. Now you don't have to read it all. I've read it over 90 times. I've studied it. I don't read it anymore. I study it. I'm listening for stuff I didn't get before. Mm -hmm. And what's really miraculous is there's always something right? When you read it again, you go, oh my God, did they just put that in? No, but you weren't as aware when you first read it. Oh, heavens no. As you are right now. So stuff yeah. shows up new. So we started with the introduction, which is definite purpose. Mm -hmm. And then the next week we move to building desire. Mm -hmm. So now that you know what you want, you start to fall in love with it. Then mm -hmm. the next thing is faith. If you are in love with it enough, and the purpose drives you heart centered, et cetera. The idea is to stay motivated long enough for the manifestation. Now in my work, I do 90 days. I'm not the first person that used 12 weeks. Like that, what I figured is that's about as long as we can stay motivated without being distracted with some right. other new idea. Right. Sure. And then, okay. So faith takes a little time and it's faith in your ability to do something you've never done before. Because that's one of the rules. If you already know how to do it, you would have already done it. So it has to be enough to motivate you. And then, so then you build faith in your ability and faith that the universe actually is working with you. Because about halfway through your 90 days, you start to recognize people in opportunities that show up that you might have thought were a coincidence, but in fact, they weren't. Do you have an example of that when something showed up and it kind of struck you as well? Hey, this is what I'm working on. And this person, did that ever happen to you? Are oh, you yes, thinking? absolutely. And now some of this stuff is still not ready for, for prime time. Um, oh, absolutely. Absolutely. But, but yeah, absolutely. You know, stuff just, okay. Cause I think you, you know, you, you get, you fall in love with these, with these ideas and you don't know, right. You don't know exactly like, like I, right. that was such a really great guidance I got from you. Like, be open to an end game, right? And this this goal, 
for this purpose, this achievement of a purpose, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. figure out steps along the way to, to get, build your confidence, right? Mm -hmm. Do some of that. A few steps because you want to be right? open. Them, right? let, let the universe kind of give it, give it, give you some, teach you something. Right. Yeah. yeah. And then, holy crap, stuff starts to happen. You're just like, oh, no. Oh, okay. Yes. Right? <laughs> Those and, are the everyday miracles. Yeah. And, I, and you're like, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't think it was coming this way. You know? <laughs> no. And it doesn't. And my favorite quote, Trevor, and everyone listening um, is by Thoreau. If one advances confidently in the direction of their dreams and endeavors to live the life they've imagined, they will meet with success in hours uncommon. And what he's saying is, is if you'll just advance confidently, take a couple of steps and endeavor to live the life you've imagined, try, mm -hmm. right? Um, to live the life that you imagine, you will meet with success in hours uncommon. Those are those people and opportunities and that unexpected money that shows up. You're not gonna become likely a millionaire in your W-2 day-to-day job. It is a means to an end, but it's going to be that wonderful creative idea. And we talked a lot in faith about visualization. So when you get this idea, right, it's thought energy. That's the kind of form of energy it is. And you get this idea and it requires you with conscious awareness to intentionally think about it, focus on it, fall in love with it, take steps toward it, all that. It, it counts on you because when you're moving toward your goal, you feel really good. And that vibration, that excitement is the DNA for a spiritual seed. You have to have an emotion or an, a, a vibration. And if it's something negative, same thing. If it's on purpose or by default, positive or negative, whatever idea that you hold and think about over and over and over again over time, eventually you will believe. And it's true. It's true for you. So let me think where we are. Oh, yeah. So there's two kinds of seeds, right? Well, let me make sure I got everything. Okay. Then we did imagine, we did auto suggestion. Mm -hmm. That's this how we learn in spaced repetitive intervals over time. And in my um, hybrid course, which has thinking grow rich and it has the universal laws, and you also set your goal and with accountability, organization of your calendar, a lot of different things to get you through the 90 days to achieve a goal you've never done before. It's done by auto-suggestion, self-suggestion, or Trevor called it brainwashing the other day. <laughs> it's true. Well, yeah. Well, yeah. And being open to old ideas about how things are done to not, to no longer being relevant, right? I mean, as old as Think and Grow Rich is and, has, and as relevant as it continues to be, it's it's rare in that way right so there's a lot of old ideas about what's possible that mm -hmm. are not grounded in modern truth right they're gone they're over right oh you couldn't well prior to 1969 couldn't go to the moon right, right. Well, and he, he he focuses a lot on radio yeah. oh radio yeah. is the next big thing but here's the thing part of what i do and what i've done and where I learned from Bob Proctor, he spent 50 plus years extrapolating, bringing everything up to 21st century, mm -hmm. right? So we know a lot more about the conscious mind and the subconscious mind. We've learned a lot. So while that is the core of it is really good because it's the only place that I've found where all these business principles are together in one place. It's not unique to him, but he spent 20 years interviewing successful people to find out at the behest of Andrew Carnegie, what are these few people doing that are wealthy, happy, and healthy that everybody else fails to do? Mm -hmm. Well, and if not wealthy, healthy, wealthy, <laughs> happy, and healthy, at least on a mission, right? Purpose-driven mission. And, you know, we get into this chapter that we're, that we're, you're going to talk about here in a little bit, you know, those, the found, you know, the, the founders of the country, right? Sam mm -hmm. Adams, mm -hmm. you know, John Hancock, these guys, right? Like they put, they put it all on the line. I mean, I don't know how happy they were freaking out, but nonetheless, we're purpose-driven. 
Well, let's talk about that a little bit. And let me say welcome to, well, how did Trevor, how did you get in the chat? You are. Oh, because I've got the window open. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Well, good morning, Nathan and Kimberly. So good to see you. Our chief Zion, if I didn't uh, recognize you before, solely Dina and Jackie. So happy that you're here. Um, Yes. So the, as both Trevor and I read this again, right? Because, you know, he may not have read it, you know, uh, uh, he may have read it a couple of weeks ago, a few weeks ago, and a lot is happening every day if you're learning in your awareness of your infinite potential. And the more aware you are, the more you see things you didn't see before. That's kind of why I won't poo-poo any concept because I used to do that. And then I found out how they work. Mm. (laughs) So a lot of stuff works just because I don't know yet how it works. Doesn't mean it's not working. So I'm going to err on the side of that. So Napoleon Hill talks about the declaration of independence and 56 men, right? They would have done it sooner if they had a woman amongst them, but they didn't. So 56 men that really put their lives on the line. Right. And one of the things uh, Trevor and I were talking about is, you know, there was a lot of courage and fear, Um, not only courage and fear, but definitely a definite purpose. And so Napoleon Hill was talking about how the process the founders went through to achieve the Declaration of Independence and not be hung, but actually to create our country included so many of the principles of success. What are some of them, Trevor? Do you recall? Oh yeah, absolutely. I got, I, I, I put my, uh, my, my little, my little, you know, <laughs> I, I, got, I got the list. Um, most of them, right? So besides definite purpose, right? We've got desire, decision, faith, persistence, mastermind, organized planning, you know, the, yeah. So, but he on- doesn't, he doesn't somehow he's not highlighting definite purpose. In my experience, teaching this and experiencing this over 60 quarters, that none of it works without a definite purpose. Yeah. None of it. But the point here is that if you've created something and you didn't know about these principles, I think that if you went back, and this has happened before, if you went back to the beginning and kind of looked back over what you did that you used all of these and you started with a definite purpose. So that's powerful because it allows you to repeat the process. So Trevor, can you think of a time when you created something and you used all of these and you definitely had a definite purpose that you could share with us? Well, I mean, it's come up over the years. So the the one that we were laughing about is, you know, just my, the, my married relationship. Right. Oh, I love that. This is so right. sweet. You guys. So, like, so I'm the, I, my, and I have a great relationship with my parents, right? Always have, always have had good, um, you know, no, no, no disrespect to them. No, no, no shade on them, but they uh, were divorced. I was a latchkey kid. Right. And I knew from the time that I was like 10 years old, I did not want that in my life. Right. My definite purpose was to not uh, not live, you know, to, 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 to my death was to be married, right. At the age of 10. Okay. I mean, that's a little bit, but still, you know, it, it was, it was, I was always interested in, you know, a permanent relationship. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think I just, as a, as a young youngster, just manifested that, that in my life. I was like on the search for a wife, you know, and, and, and finally, you know, like, so by the time I, I was, you know, 14, 15 years old, met her, chased her for a couple of years. Cause she wasn't so convinced, uh, <laughs> and she, you know, but I was, I was convinced and well, okay. And so you had a definite purpose was to find a wife and how many yes. wives, potential wives did you go through between six and 10? Oh. Would you say? I don't know. Uh, you know, I dated a f- half a dozen girls or something. I mean, between I six, age six and 10, you well, were not six and 10, know. between 10 and 16. Right. Okay, okay. So because, you know, up till age 10 or fourth grade, you know, <laughs> my first kiss. Right. But the the, uh, you know, from between 10 and 16, you know, I don't know. 
10 or t six or eight or uh, some oh, number, right? Okay. So I the definite know. purpose was to find your potential Mrs. Van Worden. Correct. So then yes. could you say that as you began this endeavor that you had desire to achieve it? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Unequivocally. <laughs> okay. Did you, you didn't know how you would do it? No idea. But did no. you have faith that you would? 100%. <laughs> <laughs> and did you use repetition like by checking out every so. girl, every every girl, girl. <laughs> put them in the room? I mean, this is a funny way to look at it, but yeah. the power here is in realizing that you already know how to do all this stuff. Yeah. But you yeah. forgot. Okay, so what's next? Um uh, imagination. Did you imagine yourself being married and raising kids and what kind of house you'd live in, etc.? Absolutely. Yeah. I, I mean you know, constantly. Right? And, 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 and even like, and, and I mean, I think that there are some of these uh, fantasies we have about lifestyles, rich and famous or whatever. Right. I mean, it was, you know, uh, there was some of that, but really more, it was about the, what, how the relationship would be. Right. 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 And, and did you picture yourself in the relationship, like actually married playing house ever? Yeah. Totally. Okay. So yeah. that's, that's standing in the future, in the present. So see, you were visualizing perfectly. And as soon as you come up with the idea, it's equivalent occurs. So that is the actual physical manifestation that actually occurred when you were in high school and you met your lovely wife. Okay, so you used imagination. Oh, how about decisions? Did you decide to give up one because you found another one was more cute or fit the bill better? Or um, what kind of decisions did you have as a little boy looking for a wife? Oh, so that's funny. I did. I so, <laughs> you know, we get into storytelling, right? So I was dating a girl who wasn't my wife and I was friends with, with my wife, right? We were friends, whatever that means, right? And we were talking constantly, da da da. And I was dating this other girl, and and at some point, and this is pretty cruel, but I was sixteen, okay. So and and I knew that this that that my, the my wife was the one, right? I knew it. It just deep in my heart and my soul. But didn't I, you know it every time? Well, like pretty well, no, because I kind of I, I was like, ah, okay. yeah, anyway. so okay. I'm dating this girl, and 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 Sarah is available, all right? Becomes available, and I dropped this other girl just just like a hot rock. I mean, just like oh, gonzo and immediately went on just like, okay, this is what we're doing, you know? Right. And we're now we're, we're on a 30 years uh, now, 30 wow, years. Yeah, wow. Yeah, 30 wow. Years. So, so you see, you did all these things. You were persistent. Oh, you went after her for two years until she saw the, the value <laughs> yes, <of right>. mentioning, <laughs> the extreme value of being yeah. Mrs. Van Worden. That's right. And then, you know, so this goes back to definite purpose. And it's it's really all about the big key here is to stay very focused on what it is you want. Now you'll have other things that you want and need, but to stay very focused. And here's the the reason that definite purpose is so important. And the reason we have a hard time focusing on one thing at a time. You know, we're so blessed with so many opportunities. I mean, it's like a wonderland right here on LinkedIn. I mean, there's just so many ways to collaborate and to connect. And to, it's, it's just fabulous, isn't it? So it's also easy to be distracted. And you can't be distracted in this process. So this one question is a real piece of gold here. So once you're on your way to whatever it is you want and something comes up that really looks good, like this is something you wanted, you've kind of been looking for something like this, but you're in the middle of this. So you ask the question, if I take this on, will it take me closer to this goal or not? And if it doesn't, you must learn to say no for right now. Mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. discipline yourself as best as you can, right? To stick with one thing. Now I have people argue with me. They want to do 21 goals. But part of what we're doing is, is learning to refocus 
to concentrate. Napoleon Hill talks a lot about concentration, and he doesn't call it focus, but one of the biggest complaints people have when they come to work with me is, is I just can't focus anymore, right? I just can't. I mean, we got multitasking, we got all these opportunities. None of this works unless you're willing to stay focused. So whatever that definite purpose is, you better be in love with it. Right. You know, Leslie, I got to agree too. And I think that, you know, this point about saying like, does it meet or does it assist with this, whatever this definite purpose is, right? Yep, yep, and, yep. And, and, and when it comes to business, I have some, some things I'm working on, right? So because I feel like I've, I've, I've really got clarity on, on that. And the, although you gave me some heat because simultaneously I decided I'm going to, I'm going to revamp my entire my entire personal health story. Okay. Cause frankly, over the last year, I just kind of let it go. Right. Just, you know, whatever. And for whatever reason, you know, you know life as, as intentional as, as and definite purpose, right. As I, as I have and, and have, have enjoyed uh, with relationally, it's not always easy, right. We've got these kids and the kids are doing their thing and you know, whatever. Well, I decided somewhere along the line that, getting my health in order was, was a way to support my pathway toward achieving that purpose. Right. What do you mean the goal for this quarter? The, yeah. So, right. So you the actually manipulated quarter. yourself. Yeah. <laughs> into I, did, believing. Right? I was like, listen, I, I cannot just live uh, across all, all of my life. Right. I can't just say like, I'm going to eat whatever I want. I'm going to drink whatever I want. I'm going to not exercise. I have to like, create intention around all phases of how I'm going about this, ah. right? In order for me to get into where the meat of that work is. So if I was having a cocktail at dinner, oh, wait a minute, guess what? What that does is that takes me out of the game for like two and a half hours, right? Cause I'm just sort of eh, sit around, enjoy it, whatever, you know? And I'm like, no, right. This quarter, I gotta be on the, on my game. That's that right. means that, that uh, uh, that means there's no room for cocktails at dinner. Okay, so that's gone. Well, now what? Okay, well now I have time. Now I'm available. Now I'm working toward this thing. Oh, and guess what? I lost 15 pounds. Oh, okay. Well, awesome. So now I'm. Well, now that could have been your goal for the quarter. So what, I, what I'm interested in is is how this helped you with because you're on target for 100% completion. Yeah. Uh, right. Of this particular definite purpose. So it sounds like that you just felt better in general, right? In general, your mindset was positive and happy and you were, you, you know, really in a high vibration. Absolutely. And able to measure progr progress against this other mm -hmm. thing. And then mm -hmm. saying like, oh, guess what? Now that I'm, you know, I'm feeling good. Well, I have all of my, you know, all of my mental faculties available. Mm -hmm. to work on this goal. Right. I, and, and not like sort of hidden away or, or my like de I'm unmotivated, you know, or, or feeling bad about myself. Right. Well, no, right. wait a minute. I'm all of a sudden, you know, I'm feeling like, Hey, I, I, I'm, I'm controlling. I mean, and it went, the, the process that you went through is just, uh, it was amazing, uh, you know, but anyway, let me get back to decision and yeah. how you can help me with this. So, Everybody asks me, why do we give up on our goals, right? So most of us have haphazard or sporadic results. And, you know, if you're in corporate, that would be okay for a personal goal. Of course, it isn't in corporate. Um, but if you're an entrepreneur, small business owner, emerging enterprise, right, you got to know how much money you're making. And so it, it, you need to make or you want to make to expand the business the way you want to. So that is where, uh, let's see, how do I want to say this? You worry about money and you're not happy, healthy, and wealthy when you do sporadic goals. Like when you hit one, you don't hit another one right? Because you don't have that financial backup. So if you're worried about money, which is one of the six basic fears, the fear of poverty, mm -hmm. you, you it's very challenging to be 
in a high vibration and happy about the goal you're working towards. So if you have a process that allows you to hit it every time or, you know, within a few percentage points or maybe even within a few days, well, then you start to be able to predict what's going to happen, right? So you don't worry so much. And then the other thing, well, this is one of the main reasons that people give up on their goals. There are four reasons. And one of them Trevor and I were talking about before this was one of the universal laws. So part of my work is influencing our results, not only by applying the principles of success and a number of other perspectives, but also the universal laws. And what are they in charge of? Like we know about gravity. And so we're not going to jump off the top of a building, right? Because we'll land like a, a, a splatted raw egg, right? So we know about that law. Well, part of the reason that we give up is because we don't know that one of those laws is the one that says what day you will manifest. So you don't stress as the date approaches because you're all the way down the road anyway. But a lot of people give up on it because they don't know about this. And they think, well, it doesn't work. Mm. I'm giving up. I haven't reached my goal yet. Mm -hmm. Right. So knowing about that law, you actually just do the things we talked about, have a definite purpose, think about it every other day, talk about it, do tasks toward it. Right. Organize your day around it. But it's not a lot of work per se on the goal. It is that application of your focus every two or three days for mm -hmm. as little as 15 minutes, as much as an hour. Right. So it's not a lot. So one of the reasons that people give up on their goals is because they're unaware that when it actually manifests, you don't have to worry about. You just do your work, right? So that's a big, that was a big breather for me. What's another one? What's missing for people that have them stop working on their goals or been dancing all around it? Well, I think that they just like, we were getting in, into, well, this fear of, you know, fear of being criticized for chasing a goal that doesn't make any sense, you know, or that's that's maybe nobody else has ever gotten to a light bulb. Right. For example, you know, when that was invented, you know, how many right, times right, did that? Right. Right, he that, didn't know how, but it, there was no definite purpose. Right. So I would give up if I said, well, you know, I'd like to have a beach house by Christmas 2024. I'm not going to stay motivated. But if I said it's December 15th and I'm in my beach house walking around barefoot on the recently shellacked floor, my feet are sticking, the family's coming for Christmas in my beautiful beach house, right? So I'm excited. I'm filled with love, my vibration, and the vibration is cellular. Mm -hmm. So when you walk with a, 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 a skip in your step, a spring in your step, it's a whole body thing. It's all your cells. And when you feel lousy, it's all your cells. So the idea of visualizing already being married when you're seven years old <laughs> is a really good definite purpose. Now, there's another one, which is, and this is the one, um, Oh, I like this. Let's see what Melody has to say here. Melody is my frequent co-host. Lack of patience in the universe, fulfilling it in the right time. Exactly. That's exactly right. Because you didn't know. Mm -hmm. So you want to keep learning. Why? Well, imagine if you understood how all seven laws worked. It makes life a lot easier because your partner in co-creation is doing a lot of the work. I mean, look at it. We don't go anywhere. We don't go into the future. The future comes and meets us, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. I love that way. I love looking at it like that, right? It's it's coming to us. Yeah. Yep, yeah. Yep, yep. Because as soon as you visualize it, its physical manifestation is there. And then as you move toward it, it's moving toward you. And how you know it's coming is because people and opportunities, after you've been working it a little bit, start to show up that you thought were coincidences. They're not. That's a good reason not to plot out every single step. Because mm -hmm. if you're focused on getting it done the way you, based on what you already knew, right, then these people that show up will just walk right by. 
They'll yeah. just walk right by. Now, the other one that's very important is keep it quiet because fear of criticism is one of the six basic fears. What will other people think? Mm -hmm. What if I fail? What will you think of you? Yeah. Right. So in general, make sure that you can ask that question. When something new comes up, if I do this, will it take me toward my goal or not? And if it won't, it's going to take something for you to say no for now. Just tell the mm -hmm. person, let me call you in a couple of weeks. I'm really excited about this. You don't have to give up these new opportunities, but you have to protect right? This spiritual seed that you're nurturing. Now look, when that seed starts in your conscious mind and it's, you decide you're going to do it and you don't know how, it has no roots. It's just an idea. One sound idea is all it takes, Napoleon Hill says, right? So if you tell everybody about this goal, you're going to have naysayers that say, you'll never do that. What makes you, I, I, here's a, a quick story. Right around 2000, I met someone who was a chocolatier in the mountains of North Carolina, about four and a half hours from me. And I got the idea. I wanted to open a chocolate company in a chalet in Asheville. I didn't know bupkis about chocolate. I didn't know how to run a business. But God, the idea, picturing the chalet, and we did get the chalet. And she lived there and it was only the finest chocolates. And we went for about six months. It was what I call my $75,000 MBA. <laughs> right? I mean, I had ads in the New Yorker, but I didn't really know what I was doing, but I was having a great time. She was making mm -hmm. great chocolates. Right. And <clears throat> eventually the money ran out. Right. And so, but it was wonderful. I wrote a, a, a fiction book during that time. So it was, it was really, really worth it. And I had a definite purpose. Oh, what I was going to tell you is, is I took my family, we're at McDonald's with the kids. Mm -hmm. And I told them about this idea I had, which you don't do family, particularly because they're afraid you'll fail or you'll leave them successfully. But that's another story. So we're sitting around having a, a burger and I tell them all about it. My daughter says, mama, that's exactly how she says, Mama, <laughs> Mama, you don't know anything about business. <laughs> what are you doing? Why would you even do this? And, you know, just all these reasons why this was a bad idea. And, of course, Leslie got very quiet, which is rare for me, right, because I'm getting criticism. And I got this idea, and I have no clue how I'm going to do it. She's right, really, if mm -hmm. you think about it. She was right. But my definite purpose and the vision of the chocolate company, and by the way, it was so cute. We used the best extracts. We used Belcolod chocolate. I mean, these were the best handmade truffles. I put on about 40 pounds. <laughs> I'm, I'm telling you because they were so good. Yeah. Right. But anyway, that night when I got home, my daughter came to me and she said, Mama, she said, I realized that what I did to you today was like, you had an Etch-a-Sketch. Remember the Etch-a-Sketches? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. you created the design and I shook it. Mm -hmm. I apologize, Mama. And so, right, so I was able to hold out. So that's one of the things is to be careful who you share with. Share with someone who's in a mastermind with you or who's doing the same work with you and, mm -hmm. and who is totally aligned with your success. Do not share it with strangers. Now, again, about halfway through the 90 days, if you're following this process, which I've done over 60 quarters and 500 goals with different clients, different industries, at about the halfway point is when there are some roots and you start seeing people and opportunities showing up that aren't a coincidence, that you actually were the source. Now you got some roots. Mm -hmm. So now you can begin judiciously sharing, right? But also being mindful. And what is it that Napoleon Hill says, do the thing and then tell people you did the thing. 
So this is back goes back to fear of criticism. Do you have something on your mind, Trevor, that you wanted to share? Well, I I want to share. Well, I want I just I want to extrapolate a little bit from here into this notion of building in public, right? So building in public is a is a thing on LinkedIn, right? Um, How and, would you and, do this effectively in this environment? This is great. Thank you, Trevor. Yeah. So I'm a big believer in that, but it's but I think if we take this much much older advice right? Mm -hmm. This mm -hmm. other line of thinking and what you're talking about, we need to, we need to create peace between these concepts, right? So mm. yes, we need to respect the fact that this is a seed, right? This is a delicate, um, you know, seedling that come, just popping up and we need to take, take care of that. And, and building in public can be a harsh reality, right? Cause you're looking for support. You're looking for nutrients you're looking for, and you might get a monsoon on top of that thing and that just crushes it, or you might get nothing, right? You think no reaction and you can't control that necessarily. Right. And so you, you put it out there and it dies and it dies because it wasn't the right time yet. Right. You needed to give it a little more love and needed to really kind of flesh it out better. And so I'm, I'm, I'm down with that, but it, it is with the, I'm down with building in public, at a point, right? It, and and we need to figure that out. And so, yes, so, so having a mastermind, having some people who are, who you really trust or who are on a, you know, and maybe in community with you around this sort of safely um, sharing or figuring out how to move from I, the seedling idea into something that's more manifested mm -hmm. is, you know, is, is important. Um, and sometimes, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, well, you you brought up something really important here, and I, I don't want to step over it. You said that maybe you weren't ready for it. Now, this happens. Mm -hmm. If your idea requires, according to universal law, the law of gender or gestation, right, or germination, all seeds take time to grow. That's that law. It determines when you'll meet your goal, when it will manifest. So. The universe knows if you're ready or not. And on occasion, you've got some more learning to do. But mm -hmm. that dream and that seed is still incubating. It's, it's just not ready now to give birth, right, to manifest. And so what can happen is, is you're down the line a year or two, and all of a sudden it shows up again. But you're better prepared to manage it. So mm -hmm. this also alleviates anxiety because, right, it, it, some ideas are so big that it requires more of you than mm -hmm. you have right now. And so we defer to the universe. Now, for me, I'm just going to say the easiest way for me to think about the universe is God, mm -hmm. energy, Jesus, Buddha, Krishna, Muhammad, it doesn't matter. It's one universal source of love and energy that you don't use up. So when something wonderful happens from you, for you, something awful doesn't happen to somebody else. Or the, the energy source is not deplete. It, mm -hmm. It's not missing. It fills back up again. So we don't know 100% how it works, yet we all know it works. Because we have these experiences of people showing up out of the blue that have the exact answer. And we say, oh, what a great coincidence. You know, I was just thinking about that. Well, what if it's not? Mm -hmm. Right? What if it's not? So to your point, it is a tangled web we weave as a creator to develop something online. And the fear of criticism is real. Right? It's real. Because you don't know how you're going to do it. Right. So in, in actual fact, you have no protection. Now, one of your mental, your conscious intellectual faculties is reason. And when you get really good at this, reason becomes strong and you think through these things. But if you don't know about these mental muscles and you haven't exercised them, when someone says, bad idea, Trevor, mm -hmm. reason says, that's right, Trevor. Don't do that. Right? It just kind of aligns with your limiting beliefs. Well, you know, it's funny it, you say that. 
you know how many people told me I was crazy for getting married at 21, that we were going to fail, that it was the worst idea on earth. Was she pregnant? I mean, all this stuff, right? Like the, like people just came at us, you know, but by then we were, you know, down five the road. years, we were five years into our relationship and we exactly. were hundred percent in and, and it's the best decision that, you know, I ever made, I mean, I don't know about her, but, but she's still with me. So, you know, I no, no regrets. Right. But still it was down. We were down the road. I don't want to actually. So I tried to build my fitness journey in public last November. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I thought, okay, how am I going to do this? Cause it was really nascent at that point and was saying, Oh, you know what? We're at time. Sorry. Uh, uh, oh, we're okay. Go ahead. We can okay, go a couple right, minutes. Over. Quick, quick, quick story. So, okay. I didn't get any, I didn't get enough support. Okay. A year, last November to really get into it. Right. Really make it happen. There wasn't, I didn't have that, that like a cheer squad. Right. And so I kind of just let it fizzle and nobody noticed. Right. I, there's some posts out there. I did, I put up like, Hey, I, I'm going to do this, this, this. And then I was a few people here and there and I tried to maintain it, but that was me building a public on something that was really germinal at that point. Mm. And it just puked out. Mm. Mm. And it took me another six or seven, whatever it was, seven months to come back to it and try again. But at this point, but at that point it was like, no, wait, I'm going to, and I sort of knew this. I had learned it right. The hard way could have read it, you know, could have heard it from you or something, you know, could told me mm -hmm. like, shut up for a minute, just get going, get, get something going and not, don't depend on all this feedback to push, to keep you, keep you running. And then when I did that, I was like, oh, wait, I got, I got all these achievements. And 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 my my team came out, right? They were awesome, right? People were so supportive, so like great. I mean, I even had a call with a with a prospect, uh, you know, with a with a guy who I've become friends with now. And 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 his first question was, How are you doing on your, you know, on this on this journey that you that you're on? Mm -hmm. I'm like, oh man, it's great. I'm just, you know, I'm I'm, I'm down the road. Da, da, da. And that was a totally different experience because I let it kind of get somewhere before I took it to market, if you will. Right. And, and yes. And, 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 and let me, su let me suggest that you were more ready for it. It was yeah. a better time and that you attracted those supporters. And the first time you didn't, yeah. it's possible. It's possible. When yeah. you're really ready and you were already in the middle of, learning all this and thinking and creating and you were very inspired. So um, he did something that we don't do, which is have two goals. <laughs> <laughs> well, of one course, begat the other, right? So that's true. we have free will. We have absolutely yeah. have free will. Um, so we're ready to close up next week. We're doing persistence. Remember that when you're moving towards something that you want, very much and want to stay focused on it. Anything that interrupts you, ask the question of yourself. If I do this, is this going to take me toward this goal right now or not? And if it won't, it's going to take some discipline on your part to say no. And I'd love to set up a call in a couple of weeks when I'm finished with this one to talk about it. You can do that. Mm -hmm. So you will start to get your focus back. You start to get your life back. You're not taking everything on because life is more than just one goal. So Trevor, any last words for our listeners before we close out today? Oh man. So many last words. What would Gee, you, listen. what would you, if you wanted everybody to go out in the world and what they would think about decision or anything that you would want to send them off with? Oh, brother. Okay, so I'm going to send them off with a... I, I loved what what Napoleon Hill was saying. So, you know, we're talking about this, you know, this, this book right here. So saying, letting that, letting that outside opinion weigh on your decision, right, is guard against that, right? Guard against that. So guard. And if you've made this decision with, but you've, you you've bet all your chips on it. Okay. Own it. All right. Embrace that. 
and and go with it and have patience with it and and see it through. Uh, and, you know, at some point, you know, you, you can invite outsiders, but let it let it let it get somewhere. I love it. I love it. And I want to thank my co-host and Trevor Van Werden for his effervescence this morning and his input and every one of you who are here. My intention is that you find value, that if there's one or two things that kind of resonate with you that you hadn't thought of before, that kind of have you curious and taking action, that's what learning is all about and raising your awareness that you have true infinite potential. You know, any idea you get, you can have. Think about the, the airplane. Boy, was that a definite purpose? Did they know how to do it? Heck no. Did they have naysayers? Oh, you bet they did. But it was all built on something very specific that they wanted and why they wanted it. And so as we close out, remember, as you walk through a storm, Hold your head up high and don't be afraid of the dark. At the end of the storm, there's always a golden sky and the sweet, simple song of the lark. Thanks, everybody. Take care. Appreciate you all.